Hi, I'm Representative Steve Stivers, and I'm doing a question and answer session with Third Base Politics. First question, do you see the Ryan budget as a final solution to the debt crisis, or do you see it as a good start to restoring solvency? I think the Ryan plan is a good start. It's a good first step toward moving away from spending money we don't have and borrowing money we can't back can't pay back and moving toward much more fiscal accountability and balanced budgets. Uh, you know, the Ryan plan for the first time addressed entitlement reform and we have to reform Medicare and Medicaid if we're going to put America on the right fiscal path moving forward. The other thing the Ryan, Ryan budget did was it focused on jobs and pro-growth. Uh, we need jobs if we're going to grow America again and if we're going to return America to prosperity we need jobs. The reforms in the Ryan budget will lead to better opportunities for our kids and grandkids, better jobs, and more growth. Um, you mentioned entitlements. Do you um, support or foresee any further entitlement reforms? For example, Social Security is not changed in the Ryan budget? Well, the only thing the Ryan budget does on Social Security is that it says if the Social Security trustees report to the president that the uh, fund is going broke, then the president is responsible to deliver a plan to Congress. And I've said for a long time on things like Social Security, and in fact on Medicare and Medicaid, we need to work together, Republicans and Democrats, to try to bring solutions to the problems we face. But because the Democrat Congress last time and the Democrat colleagues this time refused to bring forward a plan, the Republican Congress did bring forward a plan, and that's the Ryan budget. And uh, I wish the President and the Democrats in the House and Senate would work with us. Uh, we can work through the details, but we've got to reform entitlements if we're going to return America to prosperity. Do you consider cuts in defense spending to be on the table? You know, I do think that cuts in defense spending have to be on the table. We spent $693 million last year on our nation's defense. We obviously are in two wars and now in action in Libya. But I think we've got to look at ways we can be much more efficient in our national defense. I voted last week to bring some soldiers back from Europe because, frankly, if we can't bring our soldiers back from Europe, how can we ever bring them back from Iraq and Afghanistan? Uh, I also think we need to cut waste, fraud, and abuse. We need to cut some weapons systems that the Defense Department doesn't want. Um, I don't want to cut our defense to the point that it can't defend our country but I do think we have to figure out how to be much more efficient in defending our country and make sure our allies pay their fair share. Regarding Obamacare, do you prefer a full repeal and replace strategy or do you think replacing bits and pieces of the law could yield better results? Well, I voted for a full repeal of the health care bill, one of the first votes when I got here, and but since then it's been clear that the Senate and the President uh, are not interested in doing any, making any changes to um, the health care bill in a wholesale way. So we focused on a piece by piece approach, getting rid of the most onerous pieces first. We passed the 1099 repeal, uh, which got rid of a particularly onerous provision that would have business people doing paperwork instead of trying to grow jobs for their business. Uh, and we're working on the individual mandate and a lot of the mandatory spending. We voted to take some of the mandatory spending and put it on budget so that we can get rid of it. So uh, I think we'll start to continue to do things and uh, you know, going forward, we'll probably use a piece-by-piece -piece approach, at least through the Senate election and presidential election of 2012. Okay. Should we be optimistic about getting real cuts in return for a debt limit increase? Well, I'm pretty optimistic that we will get real cuts or we won't actually pass a debt ceiling. Uh, there will be what the president has called for, what he calls a clean debt ceiling uh, vote this week. And uh, I'm going to vote no, because I don't think that we can raise the debt without cutting spending. I think it's completely irresponsible. So I'll be voting no on the President's request to increase the debt limit this week. But I think uh, the only way we can get it done is if we have meaningful cuts in exchange for any increase in the, in the debt limit. A little bit more along those same lines, how do you anticipate the debt limit debate will play out in the House and Senate? Well, as I said, this week uh, the U.S. House will take up uh, President Obama's request to increase the debt limit. I don't expect that to get more than 100 votes. 
Of course, I won't be voting for it, and I don't know any of my Republican colleagues that will vote for that. But I think uh, some Democrats will. But of the 435 members of the House, I can't imagine more than 100 people uh, will vote for that because that's a very irresponsible approach. Uh, after that, we'll just have to negotiate and we'll have to slug it out agreement by agreement on cutting spending. And uh, we'll work hard to do that. The Speaker is ready to do those negotiations. Uh, Eric Cantor is working on that negotiating team, and I trust our leadership and think that they will do everything they can to cut spending. And I won't vote to increase the debt limit unless there's meaningful cuts in spending. And finally, how do you feel the fight between freedom and an infinite entitlement state is playing out in Ohio 15 and nationally? Well, clearly there is a there's a fight in America between those that want a much more European type of system with a very high safety net and high taxes, or folks that want a more entrepreneurial system with low taxes and a little less government. Um, and just this April 15th, over 50% of Americans paid zero individual income tax, and it was the first time that over 50% of Americans did not pay. More Americans did not pay any income tax than paid income tax. Uh, I think everybody needs skin in the game. I think we need everybody's oar in the water, and we need to row forward together. So I think we need to fix that, do meaningful tax reform where everybody has skin in the game. We can't have a donor class and a recipient class. That is, a, I believe, a recipe for failure. Thank you so much for uh, watching my video on third base politics. Uh, my name is Steve Stivers. I represent Ohio's 15th Congressional District, and I'll work hard every day to make you proud.